second cup of coffee of the day is not as good as the first one, <laughs> but uh, it'll, it, it helps. Guys, today I have a look into my portfolio. Uh, we're gonna look at it a little different today. We're gonna look at the five highest dividend yield stocks in my portfolio. Now, these aren't the best dividend stocks in my portfolio, but these have the highest yields, the highest percentage uh, in my portfolio. And we're gonna go over that a little bit today, and I do have a bonus for you. But yeah, so this is my five highest yielding dividend stocks in my Robinhood dividend portfolio. Now, several of these do pay monthly, and several of these are within the same uh, industry, and you'll see in, in a minute. Anyway, guys, look, I'm Michael Romero, and thank you for joining us for another video today. We finally made it above 800 subscribers, and you guys are awesome for that. Thank you guys so much for the love you've been giving me. It took me one year exactly to get 500 subs, which was April 18th, and now we are at 800 within, what, a month maybe, <laughs> if, if even that. So 300 in close to a month, and that is awesome. Thank you guys so much uh, for everything you've been doing. We've been having videos hitting over a thousand back to back. So I'm excited for the growth that we have on this channel. And for that, you may not know this, but I wrote a free ebook on understanding credit, the five essential factors of credit. Um, right here is the cover. If you want your copy of this free ebook, this is just, it's free. I don't want any, I don't need anything in return. Um, there's a link. In the, this, in not the description, a link in the comments, the top comment, top pinned comment, free ebook on understanding credit. If you want to also, I'll pin a card up here for my credit, building credit and repairing credit uh, playlist. Anyway, let's get to it today. So guys, how do you like uh, Robin Hood's new look? I'm kind of digging it actually. It's, it's uh, I like the aesthetic they got going on there. But yeah, so listen, so the first entry we have of the highest yielding dividend stock in my portfolio is MPW, Medical Properties Trust. Now this is a REIT. You guys know I, I'm a big fan of REITs. Um, this is a REIT that does not pay monthly. I think it used to pay monthly back in the day, but it doesn't anymore. So the, uh, <laughs> so the dividend yield on here is 6.654% which is pretty, pretty high, you know, but this is actually the lowest one on this list. So it just goes up from here, guys. So it's relatively small. It's only 8 billion. So it's a, a small, small market, small cap company. And as you can see over the past five years, it has gone up pretty steady, but here just around the three month mark, just like everything else, it kind of dipped down. But let me give you a little bit of the background on this when it comes to its dividend information. So, and I got, actually I got all this from a number of sites, from a number of sites, because as you know, Robinhood doesn't really give you that much information. But I use dividends.com and I use Yahoo Finance to get most of my information for these dividend stocks. So, the annualized payout is $1.08 or 27 cents per payment per payment per quarter uh the payout ratio is 126.83 percent which is obviously they're paying more than they are making but as you guys know the lowest amount that a REIT can pay is 90 percent so a REIT has to pay 90 percent of their profits in dividends <clears throat> and the dividend growth on MPW is six years. So they've grown their dividend consecutively for six years. We'll see if they'll do it again this year. I don't know, a lot of companies are kind of struggling. But annualized growth for the past year is 5.88% and over the past three years is 4%. Now, Medical Properties Trust is a self-advised real estate investment trust which engages in investment acquisition development of non-leased healthcare facilities. So they are in the healthcare area of, um, of the real estate sector, which I think is actually pretty good because of everything that's going on right now, unfortunately to say. I own seven shares, 7.73 shares of it, which is average cost of $17.96 and I'm down 15 percent i'm sorry 15 bucks on it so that's about 2.88 of my portfolio and actually i may get out of this in the near future um, whenever i do hit positive <laughs> and next we have at and t so ticket symbol t you guys already know um 
the annualized payout on here is 7.278%, which is pretty, pretty dang high for this company. And it is a $201 billion market cap. So it's relatively a big market cap. As you guys can see over the past year, it did have some growth, but then it dropped just like everything else. But over the past years, there's not really a whole bunch of growth. You see kind of a sideways pattern. And that's because AT&T isn't necessarily a growth stock. It is a dividend stock. Um, you may get a little teensy bit of growth with it, <clears throat> but most people invest in AT&T for just its dividend alone. So it has an annualized payout of $2.08 or 52 cents. That's $2.08 a year or 52 cents per quarter. And its payout ratio is 105.10%, which they did drop it. It was 109, I think, a couple, maybe a month ago. So they did drop it, uh, which is good. at t does have a pretty good balance sheet and they are relatively fiscally uh, responsible. And it is a dividend aristocrat because it has grown its dividend for 35 years. And over the past one year, its annualized growth is 1.96% and over the past three years is 2%. So I own 8.68371 shares at an average cost of $34.24, which I do want to get this to $30 or below $30. Because um, I definitely think what I bought it at is a little overpriced, as especially for right now. I think anything under 30, more or less under 29, is in the, the a good area to buy uh, this here. And P PE ratio is 14, which is, is relatively strong. And this is 5.72% of my portfolio. I'm down $51. Um, hey, I'm not worried about it because I'm still getting dividends from this bad boy. So, all right. So next we have an ETF, which is MJ ETFMG Alternative Harvest. And it has a market cap of 504 million, which is basically a small market cap. Uh, maybe, I think it's a micro market cap, maybe. I think it's maybe, maybe a micro market cap. I usually don't mess with these, but... Um, I really wanted to get into the cannabis sector and instead of putting money in one company, I decided to put it in an ETF, which is what it's used for. So this is a 7.928% dividend yield, which is pretty, pretty damn big. Annualized payout of 40 cents or, or 10 cents a quarter. And it has a dividend growth of one year. So it's only grown this dividend over the past year and it's annualized payout for last year was is negative 55.56 in the past three years is negative 27.19 which i'm i don't know how that works but okay yeah and i own 25.25 shares at an average cost of 16 dollars and 61 cents and as you can see over the past five years it's done a little bit but not a whole lot um over the past year it's just been steadily declining and declining but i still am pretty bullish on the marijuana industry as a whole. And this is 7% of my portfolio and I'm down $117.77. But on the day, I'm up $21.47. That's as, as of Friday. So yeah, next we have AG&C Investment. So AG&C Investment is a relatively small company as well. It is a $6.96 billion market cap, which does make it a small cap company. It's dividend payout though. Is nice. Its dividend payout is 11.604% and its annualized payout is $1.44 a year or 12 cents a month because this does pay monthly and that is one good reason. That, that is a great reason for owning it if you're trying to make that monthly dividend income. It's nice to have you know a few companies that pay every month rather than you might not get one this month and you might get a bunch next month. So I know I'll have at least some money coming in from a few different stocks each month. Now the payout ratio is 72.02%, which is relatively not that bad. Um, so anyway, it's annualized growth over the last year is negative 28% and over the last three years is negative 12%. So that's not that great. So, uh, so, so yeah, it hasn't really been growing its dividend and it doesn't have any dividend growth actually. So I own 14.33915 shares at an average cost of $15.39. And as you can see over the past five years, it's kind of just been going sideways, 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 a little bit of a downtrend. Um, and then boom, just like everything else, it drops all of a sudden. 
I'm down about $42, which is about 19%. And it's about 4.16% of my portfolio. Next, we have Prospect Capital. Ticker symbol PSEC, trading at $4.41. This is the highest paying dividend dividend stock in my portfolio. This is the highest paying dividend stock in my portfolio with a dividend yield of 16.14% on Robinhood it says that, but on Yahoo Finance it says it's 17.67% and Robinhood is a little slow when it comes to statistics. So I do believe uh, dividends.com and Yahoo Finance over Robinhood. Now it's annualized payout is 72 cents a year or six cents a month because it does pay every month and this is per year per share if you didn't know its payout ratio is 194.59 percent which is crazy they're paying double almost double of what they're making in earnings per share which is not the healthiest for a company but that's why you need to look into these companies before you actually get into them i do not have a large position in this company i just own a small amount of them just to get a little bit of dividends each month from it the dividend growth for psec is eight years so it's been consistently growing its dividend for the past eight years and its annualized growth over the past year is zero percent and its annualized growth for the past three years is negative seven percent so we do see a lot of negative numbers on this list which is why you guys need to do your due diligence and look and in further into the future um when I bought some of these companies, especially the real estate, some of the real estate companies, I kind of just seen the dividend yield and I got into it without really doing a whole bunch of research on the balance sheets and all this and that. And that can put you in a bond later on, um, especially if they're not very strong companies. I'm okay with it though, because I have my risk, my, my risk tolerance and my risk is managed. Um, I'm not too worried about it. I'm just focused on the dividends. I'm not really focused on the growth of it. That's why I have a growth portfolio and a dividend portfolio. So yeah, so I own 51.34 shares of this bad boy at $5.93 a share. As you can see, uh, it's at $4.41. So we're, we're a little ways from it. Um, I'm down 77 bucks and it's about 5% of my portfolio. And this is a business development company. Um, this is a small cap company as well, $1.63 billion with a PE ratio of 3.43%. As you know, it's a little undervalued right now, but we will see uh, a lot of things undervalued right now, technically. But uh, once those numbers start rolling in, we'll be able to see exactly what's undervalued and what's not. So, like I said, I do have a bonus stock for you guys. Um, where is it? It is WPG. Now, I did not buy this stock. This is stock, I, I got two stocks from um, you guys using the link in the description for signing up. So whenever you use a link to sign up, whenever you use my link in the description to sign up for Robinhood, you'll get a free stock and I get a free stock. So if you wanna do that, you can. <laughs> if you don't, it's, it's a perfectly, it's all good. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna be mad at you. But that's what I got these from. So, and as you can see, it's 2.73. Um, shares that's because i just reinvested dividends back into it but look this is a micro cap stock as well and look at the dividend yield on there 72.474 percent what is going on there that, that's not good it, though this is a 61 cent stock um 72 percent is like what uh, a couple cents like 30 cents 20 cents something like that but yeah so <laughs> but yeah, so that's just a bonus stock. I definitely wouldn't recommend anybody getting into this stock. If you get it for free, yeah, hold it because it is a dividend stock. But yeah, guys, so that was my five highest yielding uh, dividend stocks in my Robinhood dividend portfolio. Definitely, definitely um, am looking to sell one or two of these whenever I go green in them, however long that may take to allocate my funds in a, another stock. Because I definitely think uh, you can outgrow certain positions um, if it's not if it's no longer suiting your needs as an investor. So sometimes selling them is a good thing, but I'm not trying to sell them for a loss, at least not much of a loss if I do. Anyway, guys, look, thank you so much for 
watching this video up until here. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm because it helps more than you guys know. Also, if you made it this far and you still haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button, turning it gray to join this little family we got going on, guys. Thank you so much for getting us uh, above 800 subs um, even before the end of May, which is, I think I wanted to get to like 700 by May. And then we're, always, we're, we're already um, this high up above, like you guys are exceeding my expectations so much. And thank you so much. By the time we know it, hey, we'll have a thousand subs on here. Um, I can't wait to show you guys this all the awesome content that's going to be coming from this channel over the next few months, uh, weeks and months, uh, should I say. Anyway, guys, look, if you want your free copy of the ebook, just go ahead and hit the link in the pinned comment and the book is yours. Guys, look, like I said, thank you guys so much for watching this video through and through. If you want to continue your journey to financial enlightenment with me, all you got to do is click one of these videos. Look, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Y'all be good. Y'all stay safe. Y'all have a great day.